Well, it's 10 o'clock now, so I'm going to start recording. Thank you, Darren. Yep. Well, that was right on cue. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Archives Committee. And what a pleasure it is to be in Port Talbot for this committee meeting this morning. Um, first of all, may I please have apologies for absence, Kate? Yeah, I've got a couple chair from Councillors Elliot King and Robert Smith in Swansea, Councillor Lillian mm -hmm. Mizzle in Port Talbot, uh, Sarah Perrons, Tracy McNulty, and Wayne John. Very much. Um, are there any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interests, please? Yeah, Andrew. Andrew. Um, yeah, I'm advised to to declare that as I'm a member of staff at the Archive Service, I have a personal interest. Okay, thank you. No others. Thank you very much. Going to the minutes of the last meeting, um, I will assume that you've read them, but may I have um, confirmation that they are an accurate record of that meeting, please. Proposer. Of course, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, All agreed. Thank you very much. Um, the next item is the revenue budget, but before we go on to that, uh, Kim, are there any matters arising which are not on the minutes which you'd like to raise? No, I, I I think there are um, every, everything's covered in the uh, agenda, so it should be fine. Okay. Uh, could I just say on the apologies, actually, uh, apologies from Wayne John uh, that this would have been his last committee meeting. He's uh, retiring on the 31st of March and has uh, sent me a message saying how much he enjoyed attending these meetings. I'm sure the committee would reciprocate by thanking him for his contribution to the committee over quite a number of years. I can't remember how many, but uh, quite some time. Yes, but, uh, thank you, Kim. And perhaps I can leave that to the end because also, of course, this is Sarah's last meeting as well. So I was going to conclude yeah. with that, if I may. Yeah. OK, thank you. But thank you for letting us know the apologies mm. for absence. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so Kim, over to you for the revenue budget item, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, the revenue budget is customary to uh, be uh, included in the papers for the March meeting, although it's not something that the committee uh, votes on or approves. It takes note of the revenue budget, which is decided between the two authorities, uh, between the uh, at, at uh, officer level, and obviously is based on the um, the ability of the, um, uh, uh, the 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 budget settlement for uh, the coming year for for both authorities. Um, the budget for 2023-2024 is 330,750, which is a uh, an increase of 19,600 on last year's budget, and it, it's uh, completely taken up by the. Um, um, the uh, anticipated pay settlement for the the coming year. So it's about um, uh, salary inflation uh, and the expected settlement for the, the coming year. Other than that, it's uh, with regard to non salaries, it's a, um, uh, a standstill standstill budget. Uh, but obviously uh, with the um, Inflation, inflationary rate being as it is, one can anticipate that um, um, uh, the, the settlement may may be uh, landing round about that level. Um, the uh, contributions of each local authority are, are as in paragraph two point three, two hundred twenty four thousand from Swansea and uh, one hundred and five. 1850 from Neath Patalba, which is the uh, traditional um, uh, agreed 6836, sorry, 6832 split in the uh, um, um, uh, the uh, contributions from each local authority. Um, the detailed budget is in Appendix A. Thank you. 
there before I go on to reserves. Would any members like to ask any questions about the, the budget itself before we go on to the subject of the reserves? Any questions? As I say, the correct thing is that we note the, uh, the budget. The reserves uh, over which the committee has more um, uh, control uh, because it requires the, the, the spending of the reserves requires the agreement of both local authorities. Um, we are down to uh, two reserves uh, in that we spent the publication reserve uh, uh, a number of years ago, finished uh, when we published the book on rebuilding Swansea and the uh, reprint of the uh, Three Nights Blitz book. So we have two reserves. One is for um, purchase of documents. Should that be a requirement on the authorities? It's sort of, sort of like a fighting fund, basically, which currently stands at 2943. And since that's not being added to, that will remain at 2943. Um, uh, it doesn't accrue interest or or whatever. Um, it's uh, it's there in case we need to uh, purchase purchase archives and in particular a, a large collection. Training reserve is the second uh, reserve, and that is um, used to fund the archive trainee post. And I'm really pleased to say that after a gap of several years, we now have an archive trainee in post. Uh, that's in my report uh, at uh, Bethany Amos, who's from Abergavenny. And um, I'm very pleased that we uh, appointed her and she uh, started um, on the 9th of March, if I remember correctly. So I'm pleased to say that um, the trainee post uh, has been revived and that's in no small measure due to the support from the committee because I know the committee has um, um, voiced its support for that post and I do think it is a valuable thing um, uh, a valuable thing so provision has been made for um, uh, transferring money out of the training reserve for the um, uh, trainee post this year so I will take any questions on the on the two reserves and the position position of the reserves before we move forward. Any questions from anybody? I I have one, Kim, if I may. Just sure. I mean I I think I know the answer, but the the training reserve. Um, it's, it's a large sum of money, but I'm assuming from what you've just said that the salary for the trainee is taken from that budget each year. Yes, so um, the reason it's such a large sum of money is because at the end of every financial year, uh, it's up to the two authorities. Uh, traditionally, the archive service underspends, it has to be said. Um, um, least that we're in that situation and at the end of every financial year the it's up to the two authorities to say whether they want to uh, take that money back into their general funds or else uh, transfer it into reserves and I'm pleased to say that both local authorities over the past few years have said that the underspend can go into reserves but it, it, the, the fund has has built up, but it would be up to either authority. Uh, either authority could say that they wish to take the any underspend back into the uh, thing, but the the fund has built up because we haven't had a, an archive trainee for uh, several years now, so we've not been taking any money out of it. But the authorities have continued to contribute to the reserve. Um, not so many years back, I remember saying to the committee probably about seven or eight years ago that we were going to run out of um, funds for the archive, archive trainee and that we would only have um, uh, uh, money for uh, five or so years, but actually the position has, has been reversed now that we, we're taking about 20K out and we have, um, uh, uh, as you can see, 295663 
defer to Councillor Jones to ask a question. I was just, may, may I just ask a, a supplementary? Um, how long does a trainee post last for? How many years are they a trainee? That's a very good question. So the um, uh, in this case, because we appointed in March, they they usually start in the autumn and run to the following autumn so that it links into the uh, study year because the uh, th the idea behind the trainee post is that they're going on to um, postgraduate study um, at one of the universities that offers a uh, an archive training course and this contract is from March to the end of September. However, it may be renewed uh, because it's a bit of an unusual situation in that we're starting the contract in in March. Um, so it may be six months or it may be 18 months, depending on uh, the, um, the situation. But um, uh, yes, it's normally normally for one year, but uh, as we've had permission later in the year to re renew the post and this is particularly linked to the the work that we need to do for preparing the collections for transfer to the city center hub yes. um so there will be a lot of work beyond providing the public service in the coming year so we will need um uh we will need that trainee post thank you kim well, i was very positive that we've got that training reserve fund, but also extremely positive that we've actually got a trainee starting, so um, has started rather. So that's excellent news. Thank you, Lyndon. Great, thank thank you. Um, as the trainee is costing about twenty thousand, is there a, an opportunity of moving some of the uh, that training reserve into maybe the document fund or a publication fund? Um. Uh, I hear what you say, um, and uh, obviously I can talk to the uh, 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 accountants about moving up. But traditionally, we don't move things between between reserves. Uh, but I can certainly ask that question. Uh, I don't know whether. Uh, I mean, I'm pleased to say we've uh, in my time, and I have been county archivist for uh, nearly 20 years now. We've only ever had to use that fund once and that was for the Neath Abbey Ironworks collections, collection which we uh, had to purchase. Um, and one of the, the great advantages of that is that it it's, creates match funding to apply to ec external partners for. So uh, we, we spent a, a similar amount from the, as we currently have um, in the fund on the purchase of the collection, but that was more than match funded by external um, uh, external partners, but we had to provide um, uh, a significant degree of match funding to show that we were serious about uh, um, acquiring the collection. Um, and we were helped by the Friends of the National Libraries and the a uh, fund called PRISM, which I think is fund for the preservation of industrial and scientific material, both of whom gave quite generously to uh, to allow us to purchase the collection. Great. No, I was just looking at that amount, and obviously it's about uh, current rate, about 15 years worth of trainees. Um, and uh, if it was some of it, it, when you look at that large sum, it, it's, it's more of a sum that councillors might say, gosh, we wouldn't mind taking some of that back. Uh, but if it was in a development fund or some of it or mm. some of it went into a publication fund or whatever, uh, there's less for that. Uh, there's less chance of that happening or it'll be for a smaller amount in any case. And it yeah. does and it does move it into two funds that we could well use. Thank I you. think uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to reiterate, it's actually in the joint agreement that the the use of the reserves is under the control of this committee, so uh, not necessarily it's up to the local authorities to decide whether they want to contribute to the reserves, but the uh, the, the joint agreement was so phrased that the committee would be um, uh, uh, would have control of the reserves. But that's the limited financial powers that the, this committee has and with other other regards it's uh, with regard to the budget it's just a matter of noting the um um uh noting that the the budget that is made and and obviously the, the two parent authorities decide independently whether they want to contribute to the reserves in any 
particular year. That's their their prerogative, and that that's dependent obviously on the general financial situation. And it's quite understandable as well that uh, you know there's some years they may need to um, may need to not contribute. It's the generosity of both authorities over the caused the fund to increase because it was looking fairly low at a certain time. It was down, down I think, below 100k, if I remember rightly, going back about seven or eight years. Thank you, Kim. Any other questions? Well, it's certainly good that we, the Archives Committee has actually got control over that and it will be put to good use in the future, I'm sure. Jeremy, got a question? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Kim, knowing probably the amount of work that you've got coming up with the moving of the archives, is there an opportunity for perhaps two trainees or is this something that you wouldn't consider or I'm just going to think of easing the workload on yourself or something? Thank you. Um, it's, it is a good, very good question. Um, I and I, you know, I quite anticipated that question uh, coming. Uh, the, I think probably bearing in mind the amount of supervision that's involved. We, we, uh, we used to have two trainees going back quite a few years and it's a, a little, probably a bit too much of a handful, but it's not to say that the committee couldn't decide that we we needed just temporary staff to assist or something like that. So it's uh, obviously be advised by the county archivist, uh, but if um, um, the um, if it were uh, it would be in the committee's prerogative to say uh, we need to to use those funds in order to um, uh, uh, to ease the move and so on. So we're a li little bit too far away from the actual move of the collections time to know how many stuff we need. I mean, we have used the reserves um, for other things pre prior to that. Um, it, when you've been to the um, uh, uh, the archives, as I know you, you, you came recently, the stained glass window, which was in the um, uh, at the entrance to the um, uh, uh, the archives, that was uh, funded from the reserve. So the committee agreed that obviously the design for Civic Centre as it was uh, uh, from the old county hall days uh, was was fairly utilitarian and it was uh, agreed by the committee that some something to to make it distinctive and individual was a worthwhile thing. So that was funded out of the reserves as a special thing. That's the only thing I can think of, but uh, it, it, as I say, it's in your prerogative to decide how you uh, how you wish to, uh, you know, whether you wish to fund something. I, I, I suppose that my recommendation, but it's your decision. Thank you, Kim. Any other questions or observations? No. Thank you, Kim. Uh, well, we note the report. It is for information only, so the report is noted. Thank you very much. Um, and going on to your report, please, Ken. OK, uh, as traditionally, I would start with the use of the service. Um, the statistics are as uh, on page seven of the, uh, the report. Um, the um, I will say that the use in Neath has been um, much uh, hindered by the lack of broadband in the Neath Mechanics Institute, a position which I hope will shortly be remedied. Um, you can't see, but I'm touching a lot of wood at this point, but we have got a new um, uh, hub uh, which has been delivered and we have an engineer coming on Monday and I'm hoping that we've managed to um, uh, uh, to to remedy the situation. Um, uh, big thanks go to Neath Potomac Council for this and particularly to Craig for uh, and his business manager Ali Forbes for um, uh, 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 the help that they've given in in, in trying to uh, resolve the situation. I mean, I can't say it's resolved because uh, I'm just hoping that we have managed to um, uh, uh, t to find a solution. But the we won't know till next Monday when the the hub that's just been delivered is installed, and we're hoping that, that will will work. We're hoping to get back to a full service. Um, 
as I mentioned, and I'm sort of jumping ahead to um, paragraph five or referring that uh, we are we are currently understaffed. Uh, well, actually, just at the moment we are fully staffed, but um, we have a trainee in post. But I have a member of staff who's due to retire at the end of next week, so we're going back to being understaffed. We've been fully staffed for a matter of about uh, two weeks and going to go back to being one person short um, in one week time. So uh, it's not been possible to um, to institute the full service uh, as I hoped to simply because we'll we're going back to a position of not having enough staff to maintain a full service and that applies in both Swansea and Neath. Um, we're still closing at lunch times in Swansea and uh, obviously we haven't got the full service back in Neath yet but we haven't had broadband either so it's not not uh, the, the, as you can see the the number of customers has been very low simply because we haven't been able to provide the service to family historians. Um, all of this is highly frustrating that I'll report to the next meeting. I've had discussions about whether we can recruit to the uh, vacant post or soon to be vacant post. And I'm hoping if we can do that, if it can get through all the hurdles of uh, the um, HR, finance, etc., that we'll have a full staff contingent and be able to return to our pre COVID opening hours. But it, it does depend on having having the staff that we're um, uh, able to run the service properly, because um, uh, although it might seem that we could on occasion um, uh, run, go back to our full opening hours with fewer staff, um, I think certainty that we're going to be open is more important than trying to um, maintain a service that we, you know, where we might have to put impromptu notices saying closed due to staff shortage or something like that. So I think it's better to play safe and and have um, uh, uh, provide the service that we know the staff can uh, um, can provide rather than. Uh, uh, provide a service with a lesser number of staff and then have to close at short notice because of um, uh, staff shortage. I think so knowing that when you're about to set out and, and use the archives and knowing that you, the service will be open and that you don't have to check whether it's been affected by um, staff shortage and not able to open today, I think nothing frustrates customers more than making the journey and finding the uh, the doors locked because uh, with a notice saying that they were closed due to shortage of staff. So I'm playing safe, but uh, I would want to recruit to that post before we can go back to the full full op opening hours as pre pre COVID. Uh, take any questions on the paragraph one and I've, I've sort of skirted over paragraph five as well on that regarding yeah. staff. Thank you, Ken. Janice. Um, going back to the installation of the, the router on Monday, um, we understood that there was no capacity in the outside um, box, forgive my non-technical um, speak, but um, how have we they certainly discovered now that there is capacity right. to reinstate the, the service? Right, so there are two two elements that uh, uh, have moved things along, and one of them was um, Craig sitting next to you very kindly uh, managed to make contact with OpenReach. Uh, as you know, uh, Jan, we had a meeting uh, with uh, of myself representing the Archive Service, Nifa Talbot Council, Craig and Ali and uh, yourselves, and it was agreed at that meeting that we would approach open reach and uh, I initially tried to do that, but open reach is the provider. It's a little bit trying like trying to contact Centrica about your gas bill. You know, they they provide, but they're not they're not customer focused and Craig has managed to um, bypass that and so we have a definite statement from OpenReach that there is no reason why 
the, an internet service could not be provided at that address. And that was a, a very useful tool to then approach the internet service provider and, and say that we've spoken to OpenReach. There isn't the reason that you think the, um, uh, you're saying that you, you can't provide a service. However, your provider, namely OpenReach, who provide the cable, um, is saying that there is no reason why you cannot provide a service from that address. So there are two things that um, uh, helped to uh, um, progress matters. I have to say there were quite a lot of, it was more or less half a day on the telephone to different people, but one one of those was the, um, was that, and the other thing was that they provided me with a bill for, although they weren't providing the service, so I just refused to pay that. And so that that also helped to, to I'm not, not refusing. I'd just say I'll pay that bill when you provide the service for which you're charging. And they took that on board. They have been very, very nice. I won't name and shame them in this meeting because I know this meeting's being streamed. But our internet service provider has I've had some very good conversations in the last couple of weeks with them, and they do recognize their shortcomings and they have apologized. Good. Well, well done, Kim. Uh, Janet, if I answer your question. Mm, yes. Yeah. Um, just uh, you, you've renewed the contract now with Chalk Chalk, I believe. Yes. I think we right. just named them there. <laughs> 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 However, I will say they have been, ex I have spoken to some extremely helpful people from Talk Talk and uh, uh, and they have been very good and they have apologised and they recognise that they've fallen short in the service that they provided and also that they were charging for a service which they weren't actually providing. So last year we paid them for internet services which we didn't receive and I'm, you know if I was ready to press it I would say well can we have a refund but uh, we'll see where the financial discussions uh, go uh, on, on this but um, uh, yeah. Hey, thank you. And any other questions? I've got a, a couple, please, Kim, on, on the stats. Um, just a, an observation, the number of posts and email queries has gone down from last year. Do you think that reflects the um, people actually coming into the service rather than, um, you know, going online? Um, I don't know whether, Andrew, you want to say anything on that or uh, whether you've got a, you know, uh, a quick answer or not. Um, Chair, yes, I would agree with you. That's that's generally the, the case. Yeah. Um, when people couldn't come in, they would email in and say, can I have a copy of this? Can you help me with this? And so on. Um, often one query re would result in several emails as they explain what they wanted and as we explain what the what the procedure was. Um, now one visit might um, do away with three, four, five emails. So that'll be the reason. OK. Uh, number of hits to the online catalogue, NA for this this quarter. Um, uh, so which is not available, yeah. No, not available, so the online catalogue isn't available. Is that right? uh, oh no, the figures aren't available. Oh sorry, beg your pardon. Yes. Right, okay. Um, we could email them around later. Andrew, do you want no, no, to, uh, is it just, what's the I, reason they, um, it, it's it's quite a personal one actually. The person we get the stats from um, was was ill at the time yes. with COVID, um, so we weren't able to get the stats in time. Unfortunately, it does take a little while to do, and we have to obviously wait till the end of the quarter in order to get them. Um, and it wasn't possible to get them in time, I'm afraid. Okay, that's that's fine. I was just reading it the other way that actually the online catalogue wasn't available. Oh, so, no. okay. so, so, yeah. so that was my query rather than the absence of stats. Um, number of hits to the uh, WGAS catalogues, that's gone down a lot from last year, as has the number of pages viewed on Ancestry. I, again, I just wondered what the reasons for that yes. might be. If just I take the Ancestry uh, thing, so basically that, that's a, 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 a standard thing that when, when pages go online on Ancestry, they're marketed by the company and when they're new and so on. So it's classic that the the uh, as the resource gets 
older and older, the fewer people are uh, uh, doing it simply uh, because it's not being marketed as well by the company itself. Um, I'm hoping because there are um, a number of other record officers across Wales that are um, uh, putting their material online on Ancestry. So, for example, uh, we're hoping that the electoral registers for the whole of Wales will shortly be uh, going online on Ancestry. Um, so the, the record officers which haven't put their electoral registers online, they're working together in a consortium and that helps us in the same way that the, the Welsh parish registers um, are um, uh, because they're the whole of Wales, it's it 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 helps helps us. And in fact, with that, we we don't get the figures um, for uh, so the the figures there, the number of page views on Ancestry for th things that aren't the the Welsh parish registers, because we're in a consortium there, and it's very difficult to um, to dissociate our our figures from uh, the other officers, especially where parish registers cross um, local authority boundaries. Uh, Councillor Hurley has had his hand up yes. for a uh, short time. Yeah. So apologies, this only feedback is all. Um, just to say that uh, the snippets of information that, be, that you've been putting up on social media, I find are really good. It's, you know, typically you have enough yeah. for St David's Day. And I'm just wondering if we've got any data that when you do post, whether it drives figures up then on hits perhaps. Um, in relation because you're obviously uh, advertising yourself and I, I try and share as much as I can and perhaps it's something we yeah. can help you and to perhaps help numbers go back up but yeah just feedback that they're great things yeah. and really appreciate them thank you thanks uh, Lyndon yeah I shared Jeremy's uh, comments there you know, the, your, the stuff on social media are excellent I always comment or share and share it and so on. And I, that, I think that's something we could all do because it gets uh, uh, obviously out to a much wider audience. And uh, I say the stuff I get really good feedback from it, uh, from people who've looked at it and it is of top quality. So, you know, really well done for that work. But I think we have a duty to help as well. Thank you, Lyndon. Two points very well made. Thank you. There's no other questions. Oh, uh, Andrew's got his oh, hand up. Oh, sorry. Yes, Andrew. Yeah. So just just a comment. Um, thank you to to both of you, councillors, for your kind comments. Um, that we don't know necessarily that social media use drives up users actually coming in. Um, I think there's two cohorts of people. There's people who have actual research they need to do, and there's people who are generally ge generally interested in history. But I do feel that it's something we need to do to um to address both sides of, of 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 the coin in a sense and i do very much appreciate um anyone's efforts to um reshare what what we do post and we do a, we do notice that, that various of you do reshare and we, we're grateful Andrew. just a question to kim really you've got a figure here kim about number of pupils reached by the education service would you have a breakdown of how many of those pupils are from Swansea and how many from Neath Port Talbot? I seem to recollect there's not a big take up from Neath Port Talbot. And I just yeah. wonder what, what is being done to encourage our Neath Port Talbot schools to uh, input the service? I, um, I, th I think that might be, um, I'll tell you what, could, uh, if, if at the next meeting I perhaps perhaps produce some more information. I think that would be um, one of the things that obviously we're rebuilding uh, to a large extent. We're rebuilding the education service, which was, uh, you know, there were certain things like school school visits, which uh, were affected by lockdown and, and the, the subsequent reluctance to um, uh, uh, to undertake school visits, which is affecting not just the archives, but the museum and the the, the gallery uh, as well in Swansea. Um, I think maybe if I just put a paragraph in the next meeting, uh, the my report for next meeting about that, because uh, probably want to go into more detail than I could perhaps um, uh, 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 say here. And perhaps we could have a uh, a more informed discussion about that based on uh, material which I put in the report. 
Thank you. Uh, Andrew, you had your hand up or was that a legacy hand? It's a legacy hand. Uh, well, no, not really. I, I was um, I was going to to comment on what's just been asked now, um, but I thought I, I'll leave it to Kim to um, circulate yeah. information later. Okay. Yeah, I, I think perhaps we'll have a fuller discussion. I'm sort of a bit conscious of time, actually, and yeah. then we yeah, we haven't got on to the uh, yeah. talking about uh, the city centre hub yet, actually. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, well, yes. Over to you. If you can continue. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, well. I, outreach we've just got uh, over it has in the report the fees and charges this is something where i do believe that members uh, have to approve the table of fees and charges which are on um page 10 of the papers that you've uh, you have um the they've been uplifted by uh, 15% and this is because um uh, all departments uh, uh, across uh, Swansea Council have had to make savings in the year um, and one of the savings that um, cultural services in Swansea Council was re uh, required to make was uh, an uplift of 15 percent in in its fees and charges um, which I have held because we had no direct direct uh, requests from above to increase charges over the past few years. I have held them for quite some time, but uh, the uh, fees and charges have uh, generally been um, increased by uh, 15%, uh, but rounded to figures that um, make sense. So uh, because obviously 15% could end up with odd amounts and a point seven five and etc but uh, so uh, they've been rounded so for example the cost of uh, printouts gone from 20p to 25p because uh, those are round figures um members are um re uh, requested to approve the table of fees and charges for the, the coming year though obviously if they're not approved then we we'll have to go back to work out how I can um, uh, make up for the um, the saving that would be required by retaining the charges at their previous amount. So it is more or less a formality, really. Um, do we have committee's approval for the raise in fees and charges? Any, any objections? No, no, thank you. We approve, Ken. Thanks, thanks. I say uh, that you have to approve them because that's one of our yes. internal audit requirements that uh, annually mem uh, the Archives Committee approves the fees and charges. OK, so we move on to the uh, the City Centre Hub, which is paragraph four, section four in the report. Um, work is still continuing on the REAP stage four, which is where it was three months ago regarding the um, design of the archive storage area, which is uh, to ensure that it meets uh, British Standard 4971 for the um, storage of heritage collections. Um, as you possibly know, if you um, uh, uh, go along Oxford Street in Swansea, um, uh, 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 regularly the construction work hasn't started yet. We're still working on on the design and there are still one or two uh, elements of the design that are need to be agreed with our regulators. That's the, the National Archives and with Welsh Government. Um, the, uh, I, I mentioned at the, the meeting three months ago that two modifications to the design had been made uh, at the request of the regulators and my request as well regarding um, the cooling of the um, strong room area um, in order to mitigate against what I envisage would be uh, an ever increasing uh, summertime temperature temperatures given that you know, we had one of the hottest, if not the hottest summer last last year uh, that we uh, certainly that I, I can recall the hottest temperatures and that not to have any cooling mechanism uh, um, and to rely totally on thermal inertia seemed to be 
not very sensible that modification was made and also a dehumidifying a portable dehumidifying um a solution which involves fixed equipment was put in so those those were very good uh modifica uh, modifications to the design but work is still continuing on uh, on the um uh the detailed design before it, so it hasn't passed hasn't yet passed a um approval that it will meet the the standard that that is required of of Welsh government who is providing a grant towards the the cost of the um, um, uh, the building, the re renovation of the building, and also from the National Archives, who um, uh, recognise the um, or, or will be responsible for recognising it as a, a local place of deposit for public records, and those public records consist mostly of uh, the Magistrates Court records from Swansea and Neath Talbot. Um, I will take pause and take any questions relating to the city mm. centre hub. Are there any questions on that item? Um, no? In that case, I'll just move on to talk about the feasibility study. So one of the condition or a condition of grant of the 5.5 million that the Welsh Government are putting into the um, uh, city centre hub is that the uh, uh, the archive service carries out uh, sorry Swansea Council um, uh, carries out a feasibility study for a regional archive solution um, recognizing that there's been a uh, fair amount of work previously regarding uh, more collaborative working between uh, Swansea University um, and now involving University of Wales Trinity St David and um, also there are archive collections in the Swansea Museum uh, as well and that whether an alternative uh, or a, 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 a solution can be found uh, uh, which uh, will um, bring these collections together in in the future into a regional archive facility. So a group of consultants are currently working on this to get, uh, together with the participation of Swansea University, University of Wales, Trinity, St David and uh, colleagues in, in Swansea Council. Um, the initial report will be um, produced by the end of this month and then the work will continue into next financial year and Nick Talbot is obviously one of the stakeholders in this and has been involved in this process just as much as Swansea. Thank you. Um, any, any questions from anybody to come on this item? No, okay. Thank you, Kim. Um, We've talked about staff changes, um, so we have a trainee and um, uh, and we're just about to lose a member of staff, uh, Don Rogers, for uh, retirement. Um, but uh, after he's actually been in working for the archives for longer than me, actually, so it feels like I've been there, there forever, 30, 30 years last year, but Don uh, was even hit here when I started back in 1992, so quite long serving, but uh, he will stay on a one day a week basis as our office manager, so he's not going totally, but uh, his, his um, uh, hours will be much, much reduced. Okay, um, after that length of service, uh, he deserves the archives eternal gratitude for, <laughs> for his loyalty and his obvious enthusiasm and commitment. So would you please, I know he's going to be here for one day a week, but he, you know, he's retired from his other role. So perhaps if you could pass on the committee's uh, gratitude and thanks for that sterling service that he's given over the years. We very much appreciate what he's done. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, thanks very much. I will do. Um, the, uh, uh, the the service is, does have a lot of uh, 
uh, long serving staff. We don't we don't have a lot of churn in the, the service. Yeah. So it probably <laughs> goes down to the fact that our coasts are quite pleasant thing to, well, I'm, uh, I'm, to I'm work sure for. I'm sure it's down to yeah. loving what you do and uh, we yeah. are very grateful for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, section six, I looked at the... Or perhaps, uh, perhaps, sorry to, to, to interrupt, Kim. Um, perhaps we should also, I, I know Mrs. Rosemary Davis, who served yes. in archives for many years, and perhaps we can just record the committee's condolences at her passing, because it sounds as though it was very, very sudden and very swift, perhaps. So I'm sure that, um, you know, you will all know her. I don't know the lady, but I'm sure many people would know of her. And I think it would be nice to record our collective condolences too for her. Indeed, indeed. Yes, thank you, for Chair, for uh, uh, I just uh, tripped over there. Um, Yes, um, I am not quite sure whether any of the members go back that far, but some of the, uh, um, uh, certainly Louise will remember, Rosemary, uh, no doubt. Um, but uh, yes, uh, Rosemary was our family history expert for, for many years and uh, uh, provided uh, uh, um, uh, when we set up the um, uh, Neath um, uh, Potoba access points uh, some years back was uh, responsible for staffing those and, and doing a lot of out outreach work. Uh, I shall pass, um, pass that on to uh, her. Uh, where do I? Um, the uh, professional meetings are as um, uh, listed there. Um, just finally, um, I just mentioned about digital preservation. I, th I think it is an important topic that we need to get to grips with. And I've just mentioned in a paragraph below the uh, that we are moving forward on digital preservation. Um, perhaps even more than what I've put in there is that there is the uh, anticipation that there uh, all archives in Wales will work together in a consortium to uh, create a so-called trusted digital repository for digital records. Um, this will carry a cost to the service. Um, I know that some um, uh, uh, some of my colleagues in other record offices across Wales are going back to their parent authorities and uh, asking for uh, funding. Uh, however, I'm not doing that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of anticipating that the that our two parent authorities will turn around and say, this is important, you've got to do it, but you've got to find it from uh, uh, other budget priorities. But we're, we're not actually at the that that point yet. And Welsh Government is um, investigating whether it can provide support to to this. But what I will say on the matter of digital preservation is we absolutely have to get involved with this and this is probably the best opportunity for uh, that I've known in the last few years. Obviously it's a relatively recent phenomenon but it's not so recent that it hasn't been around for at least a decade and if we don't preserve digital records we're just failing in our duty as as an archive thing because as we know the world is going digital um you know if you look at things like photography and so on how many photographs now exist as um printed on paper compared to the number of uh, digital images that exist um if we don't uh, set up a trusted digital repository then we're just going to end up being something of a lame duck of a service that we only deal with paper and parchment. So we have to move into the 21st century and we have to, be, I think we have to be part of that consortium when it gets going because this is the most positive thing that's happened for the last few years that all record officers across Wales, all archives are contributing um, to a um, consortium approach and that spreads the cost. But it will be, we're looking at something that's roughly in the 10k uh, a year um, um, thing, but I don't, I don't think there is a, an option not to, to do that. If we, if we turn around and say, well, we'll just stick with paper records, uh, we're 
we're just um, negating our duties. And one of the things that I will um, flag up that is a source of concern for both parent authorities is that council minutes have for uh, a number of years been digital. They're on a website called modern.gov.uk. However, if modern.gov.uk were to say, well, we're not going to keep records all the way back to the start of when we went digital. You're going to have to look after them. And that's going to happen at some point. You know, in our case, we we talk about tens, twenties, hundreds of years. So at some point, modern.gov.uk will say, you know, those records going back to wherever it was, 2010 or earlier, uh, we're going to hand back to the local authorities. You've got to look after them, but we're not going to sustain them on that site. Um, we need to have a digital repository ready for, for those. The, the two sets of records that I think are um, most at risk are um, uh, uh, council minutes and certain social services records that are on very long retention, particularly things like adoption records. Um, um, they are on a um, uh, retention period of uh, 100 years, if I'm not mistaken, and certain other social services records are on 75 year retention. So it's not just for archives, but uh, also the records management considerations as well. So um, we are pressing ahead, but we're working in uh, lockstep with other archives in Wales. Uh, there will be more at future meetings about this, but we we absolutely have to take part in in this, and I'm pleased to say that my canvassing that the universities also ought to be involved has been um, uh, accepted because it started off as a local authority thing, and uh, this is just as much a problem for the the universities in Wales as it is for the local authorities. Thank you, Kim. I'm sure the committee totally recognises the importance of digital. That is the way of the world, isn't it? And um, to think anything other would be a detriment to the service. So I'm sure everybody is totally on board with what you're doing there, Kim. And uh, with regards to the council minutes and social services minutes, uh, the service will be doing what it has to do in, uh, to discuss with both local authorities Indeed. to make sure that they are uh, deposited digitally because you're quite right um, not to do so leaves us at risk and exposed to to risk which is unnecessary given all the work that you are doing on digital so we can't rely that that external source is actually going to be um, safe for the future because yes. this is where it's going to go so absolutely yeah that just thank you for highlighting that yes. to the committee because I think it's a very important point that we we do need to be aware of as a committee it's uh, just just to uh, uh, reiterate, it's not a crisis, and it, uh, well, but what we're doing is is planning in good time. So, um, um, and 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 this is the best opportunity. We've been looking for opportunities for some time, but this consortium approach is the best thing that's come along. And I think we will have to be part of that consortium when it uh, when it forms. Yeah. Well, planning and preparation is good, isn't it? We, we yeah. need that. Thank yeah. you. And and with the uh, very brief skim over uh, the archive collections that we've uh, received in the last quarter are listed in Appendix 2 and that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, does anybody want to make any comments or observations? Those last items from here. I've got a couple of questions on the, um, the list of um, sessions, if I may just just really to to, um, to to explore. One one was the private deposit of the Swansea Ward End. I thought that was uh, very interesting. But my particular question on that was: it says the cemetery uh, whether these men and women are buried. The cemetery and the cemetery reference. I just wondered: uh, is that in West Morgan, or would that be war graves elsewhere? Um, I've got to have to turn to Andrew, 15. actually, whether you can uh, answer on that. Yes, page 15, yes. 
It's a piece of work um, that um, one of our regular researchers has undertaken, yes. um, and it's people buried, people from Swansea buried um, in war graves um, right across the world, basically. Yes. OK, I, I just think that would be of enormous interest to military historians and other vet, vets mm. organisations. So, um, yeah, that was very, very interesting. I thought to know that. So thank you. Mm. Uh, yeah, if um, Charles Wilson Watkins is probably known to those of us who live in the west of Swansea who get the, the Bay magazine. Uh, he's the family history expert in the uh, and he usually has one or several articles in the Bay magazine if you happen to get that through your door. I know this is a niche thing. <laughs> <laughs> Only those who are in the, who happen to live sort of uh, sketchy and westwards tend yeah. to get that magazine. Yeah. And, and the other one I noted, because it's obviously come from an external um, depositor, the, the Devon Heritage Centre. <clears throat> The, those deeds that have been deposited in relation to Matthew Street. So um, it's good to see yes. something coming in. Yeah. Obviously, somebody has moved away, perhaps, and they've died, and they've they've sent them back to Swansea, which is uh, yes, yes. I think I was involved in that one. Yes, yes. Yeah. Saying yeah. that we'd be very willing to take them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. Sorry, it was only one additional thing which was triggered by the War Graves Memorials. Uh, I recently went on one of the um, basically graveyard um, courses on how to record. Uh, yes. run by and I was just wondering if, if we, um, so the Heritage Department with us are running quite a lot of courses at the moment, which perhaps we should be sharing with you so you can have people coming over to do them with us. And if you were doing anything, if you don't mind sharing so that we can come over to you as well, so we got sort of combined um, uh, shared courses that we can sort of get, get more people involved with. Thank you. Yeah, I think one of the uh, the major players in the recording of monumental inscriptions has been the Family History Society, Glamorgan Family History Society. And uh, in terms of um, amalgamating and aggregating indexes, even if it's not the Family History Society is in, that's involved, they're very good at um, uh, compiling um, aggregated indexes so the the bigger the index is the more the easier it is for people to um to search and i think if i'm not mistaken the Morgan family history societies has put their indexes on ancestry as well so uh it's it's a really useful link to to make to the G gfhs but as with so many things the the lockdowns and the pandemic have sort of uh, um hit uh, the Family History Society, um, uh, you know, the, and it, it tends to have an elder, older age range of uh, interest. So a lot, a lot of people haven't, haven't quite gone back to all their pre-COVID activities, but they've been very active over the years in recording tombstones. Yeah. That concludes the meeting, but before, <clears throat> before we end, I'd just like to uh, record our thanks to Wayne John, retiring after 30 years, was it you said? Uh, and just to ask, is he going to be replaced? Is it, will Wayne be replaced? Looking at Craig's yeah, direction yeah. there. Yeah, I believe he will be. I'm not entirely sure when he will be starting. He's going to be this piece of new structure and has got an organ in that sense. Yeah, but I don't know that there will be some team on the wall and the committee that we're going to follow. I don't think it's going to be in the UK. Lovely. Well, please uh, convey the committee's thanks to uh, through yourself, uh, Craig, and, and, and Kim to, to Wayne for his yeah. sterling service. Uh, I'm sure he will be greatly missed by us all on the, on the committee and particularly those in, in these patrols. Uh, again, a fantastic service that is given to, to this yeah. committee and, and to these patrols. Uh, secondly, to um, inform the committee that Sarah Perrons is, is moving on. She has um, uh, resigned her post and but she is staying within the heritage and archive world. She's going to be self-employed, I think, to, to be a consultant. But again, 
we will greatly miss her contribution too. I have sent her an email of thanks, but now I know that Wayne is retiring, I'll also send him an email of thanks to for myself as chairman. Um, but uh, sad to see people moving on, but um, that's the way of things. But we do thank them both very much for what they've done for the committee. Thank you. Did I see a hand up? Did, was somebody? Is it Jeremy? Uh, Councillor Hurley, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry uh, it was just to come in and uh, on behalf of us, just to say a big thank you to Wayne. Um, I've yeah. obviously only really been involved with him since last May, and I wish I'd have known him for previous three years. I've been in previously because, uh, yeah, what, what a loss and a great uh, mm. librarian, head librarian, and thanks from all of us at NPT. Thank you. He, he did say to me in an email how much he'd enjoyed attending these committees, uh, the, uh, the committee meetings. So, uh, yeah, he, it, it was uh, reciprocated. Thank you, Kim. Uh, well, as there's no other business, I shall formally close the meeting. Thank you all very much for your contributions, and uh, it's good to see everybody again. These meetings come around very quickly, so shortly won't be too long before our next one. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.